For 20 years, Cassini quietly circled one of the most mysterious planets in our solar system. It photographed storms, icy moons, and rings that stretched like ancient architecture. And while much of what it saw was published, celebrated even, there was another side to the mission. A collection of hidden images, data locked away, files quietly omitted from public briefings. Why? Because what Cassini captured during its final years didn't just rewrite science. It terrified the people reading it. This wasn't just a gas giant with pretty rings. It was something far older, far more structured, and perhaps far more deliberate. In this video, we'll uncover the data NASA didn't expect Cassini to send back, the images too strange to explain, the anomalies too symmetrical to dismiss, because sometimes in the quiet of deep space, it's not what we discover, but what discovers us. On July 19, 2013, Cassini captured what would become one of the most iconic images in space exploration, Earth seen from over a billion km away, nestled beneath Saturn's rings. The day the Earth smiled, they called it. But what's rarely discussed is what came next. In the raw image data, among the light bouncing off the rings and dust, analysts found a shadow, thin, vertical, and motionless. It wasn't a glitch. It was present in three frames from three different angles. At first, they thought it was a moonlit, but its shape was too precise, to linear. A geometric column standing upright in the outer B ring. Later frames showed it had vanished. Some claimed it was a trick of the light. Others quietly noted its dimensions matched an object nearly 20 kilometers tall. What kind of structure casts a shadow like that in the middle of Saturn's rings? No official explanation was ever released. The image was cropped, reposted, cleaned, but deep in the Cassini archives. The full frame still exists and the shadow still stands. Cassini performed dozens of flybys of Saturn's icy moons, but none more revealing or unsettling than those of Enceladus. This small, bright world spews plumes of water vapor from fractures in its south pole, suggesting a subsurface ocean heated by tidal friction. But Cassini's final flybys captured something else. During one pass, its magnetic field instruments picked up a deflection that didn't match known models. It wasn't just Enceladus disrupting Saturn's magnetic lines. It was something underneath the moon reacting almost as if the probe's presence had triggered a shift. At the same time, infrared imaging recorded a sudden spike in heat from a previously inactive region, not from a plume, but from a smooth area of surface ice. It lasted 12 minutes, then vanished. Theorists suggested a deep internal heat vent. But others asked a more dangerous question. What if something under the surface was aware of Cassini's flyby? What if Enceladus isn't just hiding water, but something that didn't want to be found? At Saturn's North Pole lies one of the most puzzling features in the solar system. A six-sided jet dream, a massive atmospheric hexagon that never changes, never drifts, and never loses shape. Cassini recorded it in stunning detail, revealing layers upon layers of cloud structures moving at different velocities. But in 2013, the spacecraft made a closer approach and took deep infrared images from within the hexagon center. What it found was unsettling. Beneath the clouds, a thermal pattern emerged, a series of concentric rings with radial lines like spokes in a wheel. No natural storm structure behaves this way. Even more bizarre, within the deepest part of the hexagon, the infrared sensors picked up rhythmic fluctuations in heat, pulses occurring every 13 minutes, perfectly timed, always in sync. The data was flagged. A thermal resonance or something else. Some insiders began calling the center the clock. But if Saturn's North Pole is a storm, why does it behave like a machine? Cassini's mission ended in fire. On September 15, 2017, the spacecraft plunged into Saturn's upper atmosphere to avoid contaminating moons that might harbor life. It was supposed to burn up in under a minute, but the final transmission lasted 30 seconds longer than predicted. In that brief window, Cassini's instruments sent back one last stream of data. Fragmented, erratic, but unmistakably real. Pressure sensors showed a sudden drop, as if Cassini had entered a cavity or pocket within the atmosphere. Something hollow. Radiation readings spiked, then dropped. 
For a moment, it was as if the spacecraft wasn't falling but hovering, and then abruptly, the signal vanished. Later analysis showed that the atmospheric density at that altitude didn't match earlier models. It was to thin. Some concluded it was a fluke. Others weren't so sure. One internal memo read, Cassini went deeper than we expected and something was waiting. What could survive in the heart of a gas giant? What could distort the very air around it? Whatever Cassini saw in its final moments, no one has dared to publish. Cassini's final orbit took it into the uncharted space between Saturn and its innermost rings, an area no spacecraft had ever entered. Here, the mission's instruments began detecting something impossible, movement within the rings in response to the spacecraft. During its third dive, Cassini's high-resolution cameras recorded micro-motions in the particles of the D-ring, a subtle wave-like shift that rippled outward from the probe's path. This wasn't random. The displacement was symmetrical, echoing the precise trajectory of the spacecraft. One wave, then another. The phenomenon was dismissed as turbulence caused by Cassini's presence until analysts noticed a disturbing pattern. The waves always appeared seconds before the probe arrived, as if the rings anticipated it. This pre-reactive motion shouldn't be possible. But even more chilling, on one of its final passes, Cassini's magnetometer picked up a faint oscillating frequency matching the wave pattern. The rings weren't just reacting, they were resonating, coordinated, predictive. The idea that Saturn's rings could be part of a dynamic system capable of responding was too controversial to publish. But the data remains archived, labeled an explained coherent behavior in ring plane. Some engineers began calling it the Ripple Code. Others just called it a warning. Cassini's companion lander, Hygens, gave us the first glimpse of Titan's alien landscape. But Cassini continued orbiting the moon for years, using radar and infrared instruments to peer through its dense orange atmosphere. What it found was haunting. Beneath the methane haze were dark seas, jagged ridges, and massive dune fields. But in 2014, during a deep radar pass over Titan's southern hemisphere, something strange emerged, moving shadows. They appeared as silhouettes in the radar maps, shifting slowly across the surface. At first, scientists believed these were transient methane clouds, but a review of time-lapse data revealed something chilling. The shadows were not drifting randomly. They were moving laterally against wind direction, maintaining consistent shape and traveling at approximately 11 kmh. One of them tracked across three frames, altered course near a highland region, then resumed. It was as if it was navigating terrain. There were no heat signatures, no optical reflections, and no elevation changes, just dark, moving voids. Cassini recorded five such events during its final year, and each one occurred near Titan's largest methane lakes. NASA's official documentation lists them as data artifacts, but mission logs from the same window describe them as mobile radar occlusions of unknown nature. Could Titan host more than liquid seas? Could something be moving beneath that dense veil, still hidden from every lens? While analyzing plasma wave data from Cassini's ring diving maneuvers, engineers noticed an unexplained anomaly. On three separate occasions, Cassini recorded an ultra-low-frequency radio signal just above the threshold of detection. These pulses lasted precisely 40 to seconds each, repeating every 19 hours, and always coincided with the spacecraft's crossing of the ring plane. What caught scientists off guard was the structure of the signal. It had a beginning, a peak, and a symmetrical fade when plotted visually. The signal formed a shape eerily similar to a sine wave overlaid with a digital carrier. It resembled a beacon. Initially dismissed as interference, deeper analysis confirmed the signal originated from within Saturn's ring system, but not from any specific moon, nor from the planet itself. It came from the void, the space between. One research group proposed that the signal may be natural, the product of magnetic resonance within the ring particles. Another team quietly labeled the source as stationary and repeating. Cassini's final orbit passed through the same region one last time. The signal appeared again, but this time it ended prematurely mid-pulse, as if interrupted. 
Cassini's data systems were designed to prioritize imagery and telemetry in real time, often deleting low-priority captures during high-load operations. But during the 17th ring dive, a set of high-resolution frames originally flagged for deletion were recovered in a compressed memory dump. What they showed has never been publicly released in full. One image taken with a 12-second exposure captured the space directly above the rings in silhouette. In the upper third of the frame is a curved structure, not part of the ring, not part of Saturn's shadow. It appears smooth, elongated, and metallic. The object is featureless but partially reflects light consistent with artificial surfaces. Most dismissed it as a cosmic ray streak or motion blur, but subsequent frames show a faint outline of the same form shifted slightly. Three images, three positions, motion. The object was never seen again, but Cassini's camera logs revealed something even more shocking. The probe had briefly adjusted its imaging angle during those frames automatically without operator input. A backup AI process had triggered the adjustment based on a brightness fluctuation interpreted as an anomaly. The camera turned itself towards something. What did Cassini see before its final descent? And more importantly, why was that image never meant to be saved? Cassini was never meant to find what it found. It was launched to study storms, rings, and moons, to map a world we believed we already understood. But as the years passed, the images it sent back began to change, not just in resolution, but in implication. The shadows became sharper, the structures more symmetrical, the behaviors less natural, and the silences, those long empty stretches between data packets, began to feel like answers we weren't ready to receive. From the strange motion inside Titan's atmosphere to the rhythmic pulses in Saturn's hexagon, from the wave patterns in the rings to the unidentified shape the camera turned itself to see, Cassini didn't just map Saturn. It uncovered something veiled, something that may not be planetary, something that may have always been there, waiting. Its final descent wasn't just about avoiding contamination. It was containment, a quiet eraser, a decision to end a mission, not because it failed, but because it saw too much. And maybe, just maybe, that's why so many of its final images were never released. Not because they were corrupted, but because they were understood. If this shook your view of Saturn and what might be hiding behind the curtain of space, subscribe now and help us pull back the veil. And leave a comment below. Do you believe Cassini's final images were hidden because they threatened science or because they revealed something older than science itself?